Howdy folks, TJ here. Thought I would show you off a little bit of my Mac Pro nuclear reactor connected to a Blackmagic eGPU. Not the Pro version, this is the original one that's an RX 580. I have everything kind of turned around right now because I'm gonna be jostling cables. This is not in its final resting spot. I was gonna do it on this desk, but I think after tinkering around with it for the last day or two, this is all gonna move behind me over to where I normally do my videos. And I'm going to connect two displays to this. I've got a nice HP uh, Omen 32 inch monitor that's also a QHD. And I'm gonna use this one, the two of them together. Uh, I think it will be a great tag team for video editing and just having a fun time on my Mac Pro. So what I thought I would do is, and I'll move the camera close up, I don't do any of the HDMI capture. I do have a device, but in the past when I used it, it did some oddball things and I just never did uh, continue on with it. But I'm gonna run a, a benchmark program called Valley. And it's just gonna basically show you the frames per second on what my standard stock Mac Pro 2013 will do. Uh, you may not, because I'll move the camera in, but the, the screen is quite small in terms of text. And if you're blind like me, you're going to have a hard time seeing it. And the FPS is a very small number up in the right-hand corner. And I'm not sure if there's a way that you can uh, play with the valley settings to make that number big. Uh, so I will probably, during the video playback, uh, yell at you and say what to FPS I'm getting. Uh, but you'll see... Uh, any clunkiness or any uh, video issues. Uh, in my testing so far, what I've been experiencing is this computer is the Mac Pro with six core, 32 gigabyte of RAM, 256 gigabyte uh, SSD, and it's got the dual D500s. Around medium setting on this particular benchmark, 20, 25, 30 frames per second, depending on what part of the valley it's going through, sometimes a little higher than 30, sometimes a little lower, uh, and it generally works fine, and I can change, and I'll do that during the video, uh, change to a higher setting and an ultra setting so you can kind of see. Overall, it's generally usable for a commoner like me. If you're a video game player, probably not. You want the higher frames per second, but what's amazing is this eGPU uh, definitely does double those numbers. Now, double may not sound astronomically high for you people that are used to super high frames per second, but when you're getting uh, upper 40s, 50s, 60s, 70 frames per second with the eGPU compared to a stock setup, that definitely makes a world of a difference. You can have a nice stream uh, at a higher resolution, basically. So let me do this. Let me move the camera in a little bit. We're going to launch this benchmark program. And uh, you're going to see this right now. It's This screen is a Thunderbolt 27-inch Apple. Uh, I'm going directly from it to my Mac Pro, not using the eGPU at this time, so you can get the stock numbers and see what it's like. So hold tight. Let me move things in. I may or may not edit this part out. Uh, and I probably won't. Uh, I, I like chatting with you. <laughs> so let's. Uh, that's probably good enough there. Let me turn off this lighting, though. That may uh, focus in on things better, and I'll focus in on the screen. And I'm going to go up and launch. So it's right now on medium quality. Everything is stock out of the door for uh, this U uh, Unigen uh, Benchmark Valley. And I'm just going to hit run. Sound comes from it. Uh, when you start the program, it, it drops down FPS, and then it gets up and levels things out. Right now, the temperature up in this corner says 46 degrees centigrade for the CPU or GPU chip. Uh, FPS is uh, was 20 on this screen. It's 37. Topped out at 39, 38. On this screen, it's 32. So you're generally seeing the numbers be at around... Uh, the uh, mid to lower 30s. This one's upper 20s, 28 on this one. Everything's generally fairly fluent. This is with the D500. 
definitely, in my opinion, usable for what I do. I don't play Fortnite. I don't do any of those kind of things. So it, this generally works fine for me. This one's at, up in the 40s, 47, 46. For whatever reason, this one seems less graphic intensive. Upper 30s, lower 40s. So in general, you can kind of see a MO here. Uh, it's either in the around 30, 30 give or take, uh, lower 30s, up to on some of these screens in the lower 40 range. We'll just go through a few more of these. We won't show every single one. But you can see it generally looks good. This one's 25. This one seems to be a little bit more needy. Uh, temperature on the CPU is rising a little bit, 48 degrees. Of course, this is a Mac Pro. Uh, whisper quiet. Nothing's coming from this, only this one. I've got two nuclear reactors side by side. Lower 20s. This one's a 22, 23. Generally looks okay, though. Also, these must be more heavy duty. 22, 21. So lower 20s on the FPU on this particular one. Again, lower 20s. See, it seems like it's progressing and making uh, things a little harder. So let's go ahead and stop this and change. Uh, I can go up here to quit. And I'm going to quit out of it. I'm not going to change the setting mid-cycle. I found when I did that, it didn't always take. Uh, I'm going to go into this and change medium to high, to high, and rerun this. And see if the FPS comes down on everything. It should. It's at least uh, doing higher screen here. Yes, so on this one, lower 20s already. 21. Mid-20s, around 26. We'll see what that one that had the upper 40s earlier, what that one does. I'm going to guess in the 30s. Uh, 23 on this one. GPU chip is up to 52 degrees centigrade. But still, everything, in my opinion, it's a little, maybe a little choppy. I'm not quite, yeah, a little choppy. Uh, 21 on that one, 20 on this one. We should start seeing some upper teens, I think, as we move on. This one is, so this is the one that had 40s before. This is 34, 35, 36, 33. So on this particular one, that was up in the mid-40s earlier. So everything's dropped down probably a good 5 to 10 uh, frames per second. We'll see if we get any below 20. This is uh, lower to mid-20s on this one. Twenty. If I remember right, the other one, it, it, it was around 21, 22, 23 on this one. So it, didn't drop, it did drop a little bit, but it's still holding its place. Right now, a lower 20s on this. Definitely, uh, you want the frames per second. You know, up at 30 range, I find that for my eye. Oh, they, yeah, this one's dropped. 17 on this. 17. 18. Below 20s again, 17 and 18. So I think you get the drift. Everything's dropping. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. Might as well do an ultra one also. Quit. And we're going to uh, go up and select Ultra, Ultra, Run. <coughs> so definitely big drop here. So 17. This very first screen, you know, before was getting 20s, upper 20s. Now we're down to uh, lower 20s on all of these. We should see a big drop on those later ones, probably 13, 14, 15, I'm, I'm going to guess. Yeah, 20 on this one. 
So everything, if you're looking at it, again, uh, you know, a bit slow, bit a little bit choppy. 17 on this one. GPU chips up to 56 degree. So this is the one that used to get good. So this one's uh, holding okay. It's tw upper 20s, 28, 27. I want to get to that later one and see what the heck happens. And then we'll switch. I'll turn off the camera and switch to the eGPU so you can see all this. So 20. So it is, it, you know, it is managing. This one's at 17. So it's not dro dropping down to 10 or 11 or 12 uh, so far. They're staying up in the uh, upper teens. This one's 19. So the D500s are still chugging away. They're, they're doing their best. 16, 15. So this one's toggling between 15 and 16. And we're about to end this. So yeah, so now we're down to 15 on this. So you can see everything progressively getting a little bit uh, slower frames per second. This one, yeah. So let's go ahead and stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to connect everything back up. And I'll show you my connections. And then we'll go eGPU. All right. So let's go ahead and boot everything up. So the one issue that I'm experiencing... I'm unable to religiously get, oh, if I was to run this one screen only, connected directly to the eGPU. I already once or twice out of many tries, even plugged into the proper port number six over there, uh, was able to get video to come up on the screen. It's booting. It, it basically needs a small HDMI screen over here right now that I can get my boot up stuff from. And then it seems to wake this one up and everybody's hunky-dory. If I just plug this one in alone, uh, it's hiccupy, and maybe it's just the way that I'm setting things up. Unsure, but I need to uh, change that. So I'm gonna, I'll come in on a close up here in a moment. I'm plugging into. Uh, let's go ahead and plug in the number five on this. All right. So I have. Uh, let me move in the the camera closer here, and then we'll boot up. Hello. All right, Thunderbolt cable connected to a Apple uh, Thunderbolt to USB-C adapter. That's plugged in right here on this one. So this cable coming here, I've got plugged in with this adapter here, plugged into the bottom port of my uh, Blackmagic eGPU. Out of this one, I've got another Apple adapter. Again, these are the Thunderbolt 2 to USB-C, basically. Uh, this is plugged in directly to this monitor. And then I have an HDMI cord running over to a small TV over here. I guess I should probably get that in the, the video, too, for right now. And then we'll focus in on the screen here in a second. So we're going to boot up. So let's go ahead and uh, turn it on and see what happens. This little screen I have on the left is just a Sony Bravia 720p TV. And it looks actually kind of cool. I use it a lot, a lot on my retro and vintage uh, consoles. Is the light on? Yep. Light on's on the eGPU. I've got Kryptonite installed. That is the newer version of basically Purge Master. So I've got Kryptonite installed. I did this all this morning. <laughs> did a fresh install of Monterey 1274. Nothing pretty much else is on there other than the Unigen Valley program. And then I need to log in. So let me go ahead and you don't need to see me log in.
I gotta type in my password here. Excuse pot in the dust. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Let me move this keyboard back over here. We'll turn off this lighting back here. Come in on the screen a little bit tighter. So what I'm going to do is I need to grab my mouse here, get a little real estate on this desk. I'm going to drag over the program. It's still on the ultra. I'm gonna change it to medium and uh, focus in on the screen here. All right, good, and run. So this is using the eGPU. So you can immediately see upper, it's bouncing between upper 40s to upper 60s frames per second. 80s, 90s, 103. It's all kind of a bit all over the place. Upper 40s to 100 at one point. I guess it depends on what screen it's drawing in, but right now this one's uh, upper 40s, 60s, 70s. So you can see this RX 580 is cranking ass. It's definitely making a big difference on medium here. 50s, 60s. We'll get to some of those other more needy ones here shortly. Everything looks fairly fluent to me. Once in a while, I'll get a little hickety jumpity. I don't know. It could be my eyes. Uh, this one's uh, 50, 60, 70, 80s, upper 80s, once it kind of gets dialed in here. So the frames per second definitely skyrocketed. Considerably higher. What's that... Uh, Anywhere, you know, doubling at least, and then in some cases, maybe almost about tripling. When it gets to the rain ones, we'll see that, and then we'll switch. We'll just go right from high to ultra <laughs> and see what it does. So this one's up in the upper 70s, lower 80s. If I remember right, this one was kind of needy on the D500s. 70s. So you can see the frames per second is definitely considerably higher. 60s. Upper 50s. All right, you've probably seen enough. So let's, one more, let's go right to ultra to make this video, because this video is gonna be long. Uh, we're gonna change it to the ultra setting. Medium right up to ultra and run. So on this one, uh, on the D500, remember we were getting pretty low. 60s, upper 60s. Right now on this, 90s, 60s. So it definitely does fluctuate, but once it kind of gets locked in, it kind of steadies up a bit. This one, 70s. So we'll see what it's like on those rain ones. The rain ones is where things kind of really, you know, and this is at the ultra setting here too. So it's just really staying pretty steady. Mid 70s, uh, the GPU chip is 54 degrees Celsius. Maybe you've been seeing that all this time, I'm unsure. 70s. Nineties, upper nineties, upper eighties. So overall looks pretty good. Definitely speedy. Mid seventies, upper seventies. Now, I haven't quite paid attention, but do all these scenes look faster? They all look like I'm spanning the globe at a quicker pace. <laughs> Flowers, 
uh, 70s, mid-70s on this one. So the rain's starting to come in. This is where things really slowed up before. 70s, upper 60s. And this is on the ultra setting, too. This is the highest setting they have. Now, there may be some other settings you could tweak to make it even harder. This one's upper 50s. Mid 50s. And the rain, upper mid 60s on this one. So, you can see the big improvement here. Heavy rain, upper 50s, lower 60s. I don't even remember if I saw that one before. So I think we've seen enough uh, to say, let me quit out of this and we'll turn on the lighting and wrap up this video. So hold tight. I may or may not edit this. <laughs> and moving in. So... Pretty cool, in my opinion. You know, I've never had an eGPU before. So I'm blown away that if you're, uh, uh, obviously if you're playing video games, this was very video game oriented, I'm guessing, the, all the graphics and high resolution stuff coming at you. So right off the bat, if there was a video game that was semi-slow, choppy, running off of a stock uh, Mac Pro, not trash can, don't call it a trash can, call it a nuclear reactor. <laughs> Uh, it definitely speeds that up. So you may have a fun time with this RX 580 in video game capability, getting higher frames per second and make things more enjoyable at a better graphics mode so everything looks better. So anyway, I think that's it. Uh, I will make more videos later. My whole goal and reason I purchased this was because I do video, video editing for my YouTube channel and I wanted to have things quicker. So if my next text will be in DaVinci Resolve, uh, rendering a video in regular Mac Pro, and then eg pu affied <laughs> pu a pu affied uh, version, and see how much faster, if at all, it is. So anyway, thanks for watching. Step one: I've now got the general connection made up. This is not the final resting resting spot, nor am I going to use this small screen over here. I've got some other screens that I'm going to set things up on. Uh, but overall, using two Apple Thunderbolt 2 to 3, basically, or USB-C adapters, uh, you can uh, connect a Apple 27-inch Thunderbolt display to your Mac Pro, and it worked fairly well. A little bit of a hiccup when you're running it through the GPU. I couldn't get the video even on ports 5 and 6, which are supposed to be synced with the HDMI. Like I said, I, I just couldn't get the video to come up. It would just stay black. One time I went over here and I pushed the power button after I let the thing boot up for two minutes, nothing. I pushed the power button to turn it off, but then the video came on. So it was like, okay, I kind of woke it up. I don't know. It's kind of weird. So anyway, other than that oddity, so far so good. Thanks for watching. Bye.